I wouldn't know if Amazon FBA would still work in 2021. So I decided to launch a brand new product with a completely new brand and launch it in the midst of everything going on right now with the pandemic. Basically, I wanted to see if Amazon FBA was still something worth trying in 2021. And the results may surprise you. The reason I'm putting this video together is because I wanna actually pull back the curtain and show you the real experience, the real behind the scenes of what it's like to run a real Amazon business. And I'm gonna share with you the real truth about everything here. I'm not gonna be talking about any million uh, you know, dollar mansions, no Lamborghinis, million dollar watch collections or anything like that. Just the true process of running a real business. And I'm not gonna try to convince you to start an Amazon FBA business or anything like that. And in this video, I'll take you over day by day exactly how much I made in each day, what my product costs were, what you know other hidden costs that there were on this whole process. I'll also show you at then how much I profited. And at the end of this whole video, I'll show you and tell you about some of the biggest mistakes that I ran into in this process that hopefully if you decide to go ahead with this journey as well, you can avoid those mistakes, especially in 2021 because they cost me thousands of dollars and I don't want the same to happen to you. So make sure to stick to the end for that because that alone will save you a ton of money. Now let's dive into the video. And for those of you who don't know what Amazon FBA is, basically just a way for you to sell your products on Amazon. And typically how this whole thing works is you send your products into Amazon, Amazon stores your products and ships the product out to the customer whenever someone buys your product on Amazon. It's a fairly simple you know, business model concept. Like I said, as soon as someone buys your product on Amazon, Amazon packs the product up and ships it out to the customer. And from there, all you gotta do is really pay the Amazon fees, the fulfillment fees for them doing that. And basically everything else is pretty passive for you. You don't have to uh, deal with customers or anything like that. They just buy your products on Amazon and Amazon deals with the rest. And the reason I chose to go into this business model over you know, kind of everything else is because it's the most passive business model out there that, that I've found and that I've tried. Basically, it's a lot of front-loaded work. So you know, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of work to do at, front, uh, you know, at the beginning, at the front of this whole thing. But as you go down, once you've you know, kind of set everything up, it becomes really passive. And again, don't get me wrong because I think that nothing is passive in this world. I've tried tons of different business models and nothing is ever gonna be truly passive. But from what I've experienced, Amazon is about as you know passive as it gets. And Amazon actually is one of the biggest opportunities right now uh, in terms of starting a business and growing something you know relatively passive. And Amazon has actually become you know a huge opportunity in the past few years here. It has you know recently grown to a 1.6 trillion dollar company. And in my eyes, you know as Amazon continues to grow and you know dominate the markets, if you can just hitch your you know bandwagon to Amazon, you know they kind of can pull you all the way to the finish line. And obviously you wanna be able to take advantage of everything that they're doing. And it's really awesome too, because I think right now there are like 150 million Prime members you know, in the US alone, which is you know nearly half the population buying things from Amazon on a consistent basis. So if you can sell your products on Amazon, you're kind of tapping into this huge market of people who trust Amazon and actually, you know, buy from Amazon uh, on a consistent basis. And by the way, if you didn't already know, most of the products sold on Amazon aren't actually sold by Amazon. About two thirds of all products you ever see on Amazon are sold by third party sellers, which means, you know, just regular people like you and me. So now that you understand the business model and kind of how it all works and can see the, you know, the power of Amazon and how it continues to grow. Let's dive into my numbers. But before we do, just remember to like the video because, you know, a lot of people don't put this kind of content out there. They don't share these things behind the scene. And, you know, it's a little scary to, to do this. So, you know, leaving a like really supports the channel and helps us grow and, you know, tells me, hey, you know, put more content like this because it really helps. So I do appreciate that. Now let's dive into my numbers. All right, guys. So here we are in my, you know, um, reporting software. I use Sellerize basically just like a profit loss statement, you know, tool. It also has a bunch of other stuff here. It's something that I've actually started using to help keep track of all my profits and losses and stuff. You know, in the past, I've never really done this. And obviously I knew I was profiting, but I don't know how much and it's just a whole pain. So I'm really glad that this software exists and it really helps me keep everything on track. If you're st you know, starting to sell on Amazon or you are selling on Amazon, I'd really recommend picking this up. I'll leave a link down in the description. So I'm really happy uh, with it. So let's go and start off with my first day selling on Amazon, which was March 7th of 2021. We sold one unit and I'm gonna actually open up the you know kind of net profit details. You can see that we sold the, the unit for 1981. Uh, cost of goods was almost $6. FBA fees, which you know is one of the fees you have to pay with Amazon. Basically, this is for them to pick the product, you know, kind of like grab it off the shelves, package it up and send it off to the customer, you know, the shipping costs basically. So that's how much we had to pay for that, 331. 
Amazon fees, this is about 15 to 17%. Just basically every product sold on Amazon owes Amazon a 15 to like, you know, 20% commission. Usually it's closer to 15%. I think ours is 17%, just depending on what category you're selling in. So that was $4.36. Advertising cost was zero because we actually didn't spend anything on advertising. Um, at least right now, I just wanted to see how the product would sell. Uh, advertising is also a really good way to get more sales. Uh, but we were just starting off here. And so, um, you know, advertising cost was zero. And then we had some expenses here. These are just miscellaneous expenses like storage fees, which was 39 cents. And so the net profit for the first day, we made $5.80, which is like, you know, like a coffee at Starbucks or something. So it wasn't anything crazy. Our profit margin was about 29.3%, which is actually a pretty good profit margin on Amazon. And for the first day, that's not terrible. You know, first day on Amazon. So the next day, day two, March 8th, we did a little bit better. So as you can see, we got how many sales is this? like three sales? Oh no, four sales. And so if I open up the net profit again, you can see $79 in, in sales. Cost of good was 23.80 for the four units. That's the manufacturing cost, you know, that we had to pay. Um, so that product cost. Then there was $13 for the FBA fees, $13 for Amazon fees, $39 for expenses. This was a subscription fee. So selling on Amazon, you, you got to pay $40 a month. So I guess that's the day that they took out that $40. So I guess we're counting that too. That's kind of like one of those hidden costs. You got to pay $40 a month to actually sell on Amazon. And so the net profit was actually minus $11. Um, I think that's because of that $40 you know, fee that we had to pay. So kind of a weird day that day, but you know, whatever. So we, we kind of lost a little bit of money here, but that's because we paid for our monthly fee. The next day was March 9th and things are starting to pick up a little bit here. As you can see, our profit margin jumped up to 37% because what I started to realize on this day was we actually sold $248 worth. This is day three. We sold 12 units, which was you know starting to get really cool because we profited after everything, $92 in our third day selling on Amazon, which is if you sell $100 profit per day, that's you know $3,000 and that's you know almost replacing like a normal you know average like nine to five job. So on the third day, you can see cost of goods was $65, FBA fees $39, $49 for Amazon fees. And then we had some promo fees. I don't know what this is. I still don't know what this is. Amazon decided to charge me $2 for that. It's kind of another one of those hidden fees, I guess. We didn't run any promos, so I really don't know what that is. But, you know, apparently we got charged that. So our net margin was $37. I think it's because we actually raised the price a little bit. Um, and so our margin was 37% there. The fourth day, let's see how that went. So the fourth day did actually even better. And we went, we got 366 sales, uh, 360, I wish 366 sales, $366. Um, we sold 18 units. Let's open up the profits here. You can see uh, we ended up profiting after everything. Again, we had some more promo fees. I still don't know what that is. Okay, I probably should check that out with Amazon, but another hidden fee. Uh, and the net profit was $129 on our fourth day selling. As you can see, things are starting to pick up. Our profit margin is at 35%, which again is an incredible profit margin on Amazon. And at this point, we really had no reviews. We weren't running any advertising. For me, this was kind of shocking uh, because usually with Amazon, it's kind of a social proof platform, which means that you need to get reviews to get sales and you need to get sales to get reviews. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of stuck. You got to get those first reviews to really, you know, break through on Amazon. But with this product, something really cool happened. Basically, the way we found this product was I was just scrolling to, through TikTok. I don't know if you guys, you know, do that, but uh, I like to do that right before I go to sleep, which scroll through TikTok with uh, my girlfriend. And what I realized was while I was doing that, I saw, you know, this one product and it was doing really, really well on TikTok. You know, people were loving it, had a whole bunch of hype. And then I went to Amazon and I looked at Amazon and there wasn't really anybody selling it. So I decided, you know what, let me source this product and sell it on Amazon. And so I think that the reason why I was doing so well was because people were seeing this products on TikTok and then going to Amazon to buy them for cheaper, or maybe they were sold out on TikTok and then they found our product and, you know, they started buying our product. And I think that's why it really blew up so fast. So we were one of the first to markets in the space and we did improve the product quality a lot. We changed some things and I think that's also why uh, it's doing so well with such a high profit margin. So this was, I think, so we were one, two, three, day four. Okay, so four days in, we're profiting $130. Day five was even more. So we sold 19 units at again, a 35, 36% margin and we ended up profiting $143. So again, cost of good $113. You can see all the numbers here. These are all the fees. And again, promo fees, really something no one talks to you about. It's not that much, but you know, it's definitely something. And you can see the net profit for our fifth day, I believe was $143. And we sold 19 units, 
with zero reviews again. Uh, so we had no reviews during this time. Then let's go to our sixth day here. And our sixth day is where we really started to blow up. As you can see, I raised the price. So our profit margin jumped up to 41%, which I mean, personally, I've never seen profit margins like that on Amazon. Very, very rarely. I think only one other time in my whole, you know, Amazon selling career, I've, I've had a product with this kind of margins. So 41%. The sales were $539. We profited $220 in our fifth day on Amazon, which was crazy. These aren't typical results, but this is just what happened with me with this product I decided to launch. And so as you can see, cost of goods were $142, Amazon fees $80, then $100 in the other Amazon fees, no promo fees this time. Again, zero advertising cost and our net profit of $220. We sold 24 units that day. And let's go to the seventh day, which would be the 13th. And on the 13th is when uh, we sold 31 units. Again, I raised my price even higher to offset the sales. Uh, so we were at 46.5%. And the reason I'm actually increasing my price is not to like price gauge or anything like that, or like kind of take advantage of people. The reason I had to raise my price was because Amazon right now actually has a 200 unit inventory limit on every new product going into the warehouse. So when we launched this product, Amazon only allowed us to send 200 units. And by this, you know, sales rate, right? If we're selling 30 a day, we would be sold out within a week if I kept it at the same $20 price point. So we start, slowly started to increase the price to try to lower the sales count because the worst thing that you can do on Amazon is run out of stock. If you run out of stock, Amazon will really punish you. So what we decided to do again is to keep increasing the price to try and slow down the sales, but it wasn't working. We got even more sales at a higher profit margin. So on our seventh day, so one week in, we sold 900 in sales and profited $400 in profit. And you can see again, all the breakdown here. We had one refund here, which you can see. So that's $17.11 that we got charged as a refund. We got $22 of promo fees. Again, I don't know what this is. I probably should figure that out. I'll, you know, if you know what that is, leave a comment down below. Or you know, if I figure it out, I'll leave it in the description to let you guys know. But that's another one of those hidden fees. Again, our profits would have been a little bit offset if we did have some advertising costs. But again, like I said, I didn't want to spend any advertising because as you can see, the product was already selling really well. And if I started advertising too, then I would get even more sales and that would make our product run out faster. And right now at this point, what I was trying to do is I was trying to slow down the sales to not run enough stock. So in our first week, we ended up making $2,548 with 75 cents in sales and a total net profit of nearly $1,000 in our first week on Amazon with a 39.1% average profit margin. So those were the first seven days. And now before I go into the next seven days and how things kind of changed and things, you know, moved and flowed in a different way, I want to actually explain to you the three different types of business models that you can go with on Amazon and also explain the, the one that I used to get those profits. So the first one is retail arbitrage. The second one is wholesale and the last one is private label. Now retail or online arbitrage just basically means that, you know, you go to a store or you shop online at like a different website like eBay or on Walmart or something like that. Or you go to the store to Walmart and you see a product that, you know, sells for let's say $50, but on Amazon it sells for hundred dollars. You know, let's say it's on sale at Walmart. So you go to Walmart, you buy that product, let's say it costs you $50, then you ship that product into Amazon and then on Amazon, you sell it for hundred dollars and then you profit the difference minus any, you know, Amazon fees. So, you know, if you buy it for 50, sell it for hundred, that's $50 profit after Amazon fees, you know, maybe you walk away with 20 or $30. Now there's a lot of people who make a lot of good money like that, right? They go to different stores, they look at deals online, you know, they buy the product and then they ship them into Amazon and sell them. But the problem with this business model for me and, and why I never really decided to do this is because I really value, you know, the passive income that you can create with you know the different business model that I'll explain to you, the one that I used. Because with this one, really day in and day out, you have to be looking for those deals, you have to be going to buy them, and then you have to you know, ship those things in. It's also very hard to scale, because imagine if you want to scale your business, you have to always be constantly finding new deals, sending them into Amazon, and you know it's kind of like a, it's just a very long and tedious process, and there's no real way to make it any, you know, to make it passive. With retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, you're really, you know, not even creating much of a business um, because without you doing that work, that business doesn't actually function and you're not really creating any value because you're just kind of a reseller of other people's products. So if you ever decide that you want to, you know, sell your business later on, let's say, you know, two to five years, you know, let's say you're making your business is making $20,000 a month and you decide, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. 
Well, no one's really gonna buy that business because without you doing that work, then the business doesn't make money. So it's not passive at all and that business doesn't really grow or scale very well. So that's, you know, retail or online arbitrage. I think it's great for like a side hustle, you know, it makes some side income, but it's not my favorite way to do Amazon. Now the next method, number two, is actually called uh, wholesale. And it's kind of similar to the retail arbitrage. Uh, basically you have to just go out, you know, find distributors, of you know products like you know literally anything let's say it's shoes or or clothes or electronics anything right you go and you talk to the to you know the manufacturer you say hey i want to you know buy this stuff wholesale and then you you know get the wholesale price and then you sell it on amazon again it's the same thing let's say you buy it from wholesale for twenty dollars it sells on amazon for eighty dollars you profit the difference and you know give amazon your fees but there's a couple problems with this you know method as well with this business model you're also kind of just a reseller of someone else's product so again it's no real way to sell your business later on if you decide to do that also the margins are actually very very thin because if you can find a distributor who's going to give you wholesale prices well then you know, so is the next guy it's, it's really easy to find these distributors and get these deals and you know let's say if you get something for twenty dollars and i get something for twenty dollars and we're listing these products on amazon for the same price you know, then it just becomes a race to the bottom in terms of price. Whoever's willing to have the lowest profit margin is going to sell it. So, you know, if I'm willing to sell it for less, then you sell it for less, and then I sell it for less, and then you sell it for less. And then, uh, you know, before you know it, there's just razor thin margins and really no profit in that space. And as a final kicker to the wholesale model, at any point, the distributor can just say, you know what, I don't really want to work with you anymore. And, you know, there goes your whole business. So, you know, you're putting your faith and your business into a lot of other people's hands. And I don't think that's ever a good idea. So lastly, my favorite method and uh, the one I use and the one I used in this kind of case study was actually the private label method, which means that, you know, you go on Alibaba or any of these manufacturing websites, um, you search up, you know, find the product that you want to sell. Um, you know, you customize it a little bit, you, you, you brand it, you put your logo on it. And um, you know, then you send it into Amazon because you're buying it in bulk and you're sending it in. So you're actually kind of creating your own product. Obviously it's a lot easier said than done. And this private labeling business is actually becoming more and more saturated every year. And you can't really just buy a product from alibaba.com anymore, uh, put your logo on it and then sell it on Amazon and expect to do you know, well or to make any money. If you sell the exact same thing as everyone else, you're really not gonna see any success in that business model either. You gotta improve the quality, improve the functionality, you gotta improve something with your product, make it better, or just to stand out from the rest of the crowd, the rest of the competition. And that's exactly what I did with my product. I improved the quality, I stood out from the competition, and I think that's also another reason why it's doing so well on Amazon in this first week that we went over. Another reason why I prefer the private label method over any other method, even with its kind of you know pitfalls and the fact that you do have to improve and be better and have the best product on the market to see success is that you have your own product, right? You're not reselling other people's stuff. You're actually creating your own thing and hopefully you're making it different. You're improving on it and becoming the best in the market. And if you do it right, you'll be creating a real brand, something that can grow into something bigger than just this product, expand it and you know take it off Amazon even eventually, grow it into something real that has value that if you decide later that, you know, hey, you don't want to do this anymore or you just want to exit in some way, it's a brand with value, which means that, you know, an investor or somebody else will have the desire to go out and buy it. And, you know, there's a lot of people who do exit from Amazon companies and, you know, make a lot of money that way. So everything that you put into it every single day is all actually building the value of the company as well. And lastly, the reason why I like this business model much more than the wholesale one or the retail arbitrage one is it's because at the end of the day, after you put in all that work at the beginning, it's all passive after that, because all you gotta do is just continue to reorder the inventory when your inventory gets low. It's as close to passive as you can get. Now, obviously, like I said, it's a lot more work than, you know, I'm making it out to seem now. I don't wanna, you know, make it seem like it's super easy. There's a lot of work involved in this. And if you wanna know, you know, how to find the right product, how to launch that product, how to find suppliers for that product, literally everything, you know, that I did for this product right here, check the first link in the description. It's gonna be a playlist to um, my like free mini course of Amazon FBA of how to start. And there's like, you know, six or seven videos in there that go super in depth on every single aspect of this business for, you know, absolutely free. You don't need to put your email in or anything like that. It's right here on YouTube, just a link and it will take you right there. And, you know, spend some time watching through that if you're really serious about, you know, getting started. That's probably one of your best resources that you can get. So enough of that, let's dive into my next seven days and see what ended up happening. All right, so here we were after the first week. 
Then let's go to day eight, which was the 14th. And as you can see, we did a little bit less on the 14th. We did 711 in sales with a uh, net profit of $387. The reason why the net profit though was literally almost as much is because as you can see, again, we had to raise the price and our margins jumped to 55% almost. Uh, again, here are all the fees. Again, we had promo fees here. Uh, we spent $121 in Amazon fees. So that was that. That's the eighth day. Ninth day, we went to 611. So again, a little bit less. But the reason again is because we kept increasing the price because we were trying to really slow this down. As you can see now, we're at 58.4% margins because at this point we were really, really running low on inventory. And again, I was getting scared that we were going to run out, which spoiler alert, we inevitably did. I'll leave that to the end to explain what we did after that to you know mitigate as much uh, as we could of the damages caused by going out of stock. Again, I'll explain that later. We're at 58% margin. And then you can see here all the fees again, leaving us with that net profit of $356. Now they were on the 10th day here. The 10th day we did 729 in sales, 433 in profit, almost 434 with a 60% margin again. I'll open this up so you can see those numbers again. I won't go over them every single time. Then the 11th day, almost $1,000 in sales. So as you can see, it really didn't slow down for long. Still, we were doing like you know, $570 profit this day. Like that was mind blowing to me when, when we did this. You know, I really wasn't expecting this product to do so well. I thought that, hey, if this product does, you know, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 per month, I'd be very happy with that. That's kind of the ranges where I like to be in. If a product makes me that much, that's a successful product, obviously. You know, if you launch two, three, five of these products that make you $2,000 profit per month, all of a sudden you have a very you know nice business that you've started. So as you can see, a 60% margin on this day. Again, these aren't normal margins. These are uh, very, very high. More realistic margins to be around 25 to 30%, just you know, so you, everyone knows. Then we're here, I think this is like day 11, 249 in sales with a 57% margin. So I think we got six sales because we ran out of stock. So this was day 12, we ran out of stock. As you can see, we had the next day we had two units because basically Amazon was moving around our units from warehouse to warehouse. So as they kind of got back into stock, so, you know, when they're moving them, they don't know where they are. It's called FC transfer. And so when they finally get to the destination, you have a couple more units here and there. So those two units that we sold on that day. And finally day 14, I think we sold uh, nothing because we were completely out of stock. And so those were my first, you know, 14 days on Amazon with this brand new product in 2021. As you can see, the total was uh, almost 6,000 in sales, almost 3,000 in profit with a 49.6% profit margin. I'm gonna open up everything for you again here so you can see the total cost of everything, all expenses, including storage fees, advertising costs. We didn't, again, we didn't advertise at all, but for the first two weeks, we made almost $3,000 profit. And as you can see right here, this is inside the uh, Amazon uh, seller business reports. Uh, so it's not just on Sellerize there. You can also see uh, here the same numbers and day to day, how it increased and how it you know, moved uh, with the sales. I'll also change the dates here for you so you can see that it is, uh, you know, that it coincides with like uh, the sales there. Um, so that is pretty much the two weeks. So now, like I mentioned, our products are completely out of stock. At this point, we're waiting for our inventory to come back in stock. And if you do want to continue to be, you know, see update videos like this one about how our product is doing, you know, different things that are going on, remember to subscribe to the channel um, so that you do see those videos when they come out. If you want to stick around for those, I will continue to share this brand and this product and this case study with you um, as it grows, as it gets more reviews, and hopefully it, it really does help you out. So now let's refocus on some of the biggest mistakes I've made here so that you don't have to make those because the reason why we are out of stock now and the reason why we have to wait for, I think it's almost two weeks to get more inventory is because of one big thing that happened and it does have to do with Amazon's inventory limits, but it also has to do with the way that we chose to ship the products. So Amazon has this 200 unit inventory limit and the reason they did this is because with the pandemic, all that kind of stuff, they needed more space for PPE equipment and all that kind of equipment for that pandemic to be able to, you know, keep those in stock rather than all these random things that, you know, people are selling on Amazon. So what I decided to do to save some money was send in 200 units by air shipping and then 300 units by sea shipping because I thought, you know what, I'm going to send these 200 units by air. They're going to cost me more because they're coming in by air, uh, but I wanted to get started right away. Uh, and the 300 units I'll send in by sea because, 
you know, I don't want to spend more money on air shipping. I can just send them by sea. Eventually they'll get there. And I didn't think that I would sell out of the 200 units that fast. What ended up happening was when those 300 units came to the port in the US, they actually got stuck because what ended up happening, and this was one of my biggest mistakes I didn't take into account, was that the ports are super backed up right now. There's so much, you know, so many shipments coming in from China and elsewhere that the ports are backed up by, you know, nearly two weeks. And so my product arrived and got stuck at the ports for an additional two weeks for clearance. And so they're still there right now. I have no idea when they're gonna be cleared. I don't know when they're gonna arrive. I, I literally have no idea what's happening with those 300 units. Uh, I need to figure it out, but you know, I'm not getting much information back on that. So what I had to do was contact my supplier and get him to express deliver 200 units right away to the Amazon warehouse, which actually hopefully will be here by the end of this week, just to hold us over. Because one of the biggest mistakes is going out of stock on Amazon. If you go out of stock, Amazon will punish you, will ruin your listing quality, and basically will not show you to people as easily anymore the second time around. So you wanna limit as little time out of stock as you can. So because I was trying to save some money and I didn't ship in all the units by air, now I'm kind of stuck paying express shipping, which costs a lot more, um, to go from China to the US. And I also have no idea what's happening with those 300 units until I kind of figure those out. So basically I end up spending a lot more money. I'm now out of stock. And um, you know, overall really, uh, this was probably my biggest mistake because every single day, you know, we could be profiting between three and $500. Uh, it's kind of like an opportunity lost cost because of the fact that we don't have inventory in right now. So if you are starting your business and you are sending inventory in, make sure to account for the seaports being backed up because they are backed up by like 15 days. So make sure that you know uh, and you forecast and plan your inventory accordingly. And my second biggest mistake actually was what started happening recently was that I got my first one star review for the product, which is very, very bad, obviously, especially because it's such a silly reason to get a one star. Basically the product, one aspect of the product needs to have instructions on how to use it. And we do have instructions. We did have instructions that came with it, but I guess they were just not clear enough. And so the people, this one person especially, did not know how to use it properly and thought it was broken uh, when it wasn't because they just didn't know how to use it. And so my second biggest mistake was not having enough instructions and clear enough instructions to be able to, you know, help people understand how to use this product. So if you ever think that, you know what, this product is so easy to use, I'm not even gonna include instructions or I don't really care about the instructions, trust me, it's gonna bite you in the ass and you are gonna pay for that. So right now with this next order, we do have instructions, you know, more detailed instructions coming with it and also a whole bunch of other aspects like stickers and stuff like that to explain how to do this and how, how to make it work. Also with my first order, I sent them out really, really quickly and so I didn't actually put in an insert card in there asking for any honest reviews just because I was trying to get this product out so fast. And that was another one of my biggest mistakes. I should have put an insert card in there. I should have had a contact email that they could email us at if they had problems. Because right now what's happening is that this one person couldn't email us to ask us how to make it work. And so they just left a one star review. And so that's very, very bad, especially because this is 200 units that are sold now. I don't know if we're gonna have any other bad reviews based on the fact that they can't understand how to use the product or one aspect of the product. So that's my kind of second biggest mistake. And again, if you are gonna be launching a product on Amazon, no matter how simple your product is, please add instructions and make sure you're super detailed because just because you know and you understand how to use it does it not mean that other people understand how to use it. If you've sold on Amazon and you have any other you know, tips and mistakes that you've made uh, that you wanna help out, leave a comment down below letting me know, you know the mistake. Hopefully we can have kind of like a community mistakes thing so, and read other people's mistakes so that we help each other out and we don't make those same mistakes. Also leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product, the process, the business model, literally anything. I'll you know, do my best to get back to every single person in the comments and you know, answer your question for you. Also, if you wanna know more about the Amazon business, make sure to check that you know, playlist in the description that's going to teach you how to you know, go from the beginning to the end and you know, finding a product, launching it, suppliers, all that kind of stuff. It's like a free uh, mini course on Amazon. Go check that out. It's a huge valuable you know, asset to you. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new so you don't miss out my you know, updates in the future about this product. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.